you spend much time actually watching what animals do. Um, we often find that once we start paying attention to individual animals and tracking them across situations, we might find something like what's shown here in this slide where it's showing two different guppies and also a predator pictured here in the foreground. This guppy here is actually approaching up to the mouth of this predator, whereas there's this other guppy who's sort of hiding back in the weeds. And there's growing evidence that these individual differences here and how these guppies are responding to this predator are actually consistent through time. And interestingly, there's also evidence that these individual differences that are consistent here in one kind of context, this is sort of an anti-predator context, are also related to individual differences in behavior in other sorts of situations. And in fact, in a classic study actually using three-spine stickleback, um, Felicity Huntingford found that individual sticklebacks varied in how they responded to a predator. So some individuals, like this blue one here, um, was, were really bold in that they sort of went up to the mouth of the predator, whereas other individuals, like this one pictured here, this is hypothetical data, um, were more timid and they sort of hung back in the weeds. And then months later, when she measured these sticklebacks again, um, she measured them during the breeding season and she found that the males that had been really bold toward predators when they were youngsters were the ones that tended to be really aggressive toward other male sticklebacks when they were grown up. And so what that means is that if you sort of plot individual variation in boldness towards predators and individual variation in aggressiveness towards conspecifics, if you plot them sort of in a correlation plot, what you find is a positive correlation between boldness and aggressiveness, or what we might call a boldness aggression behavioral syndrome. So this is really what we mean by uh, correlated behavioral traits, or you could call it personality, or you could call it a syndrome, or whatever you like, is that individuals are behaving in a predictable way through time and across situations. When behaviors are correlated with each other, there are some really interesting implications. So this slide is meant to represent some of the things that, say, a red-winged blackbird does during the course of its lifetime. Um, so we tend to think that how a male red-winged blackbird, for example, behaves while he's trying to track mates, so how he sings, how that's not related to how he, say, behaves in a flock, or say during competition for resources and his levels of aggression, or maybe even how he behaves as a parent. But if individual differences in behavior are consistent across contexts, then that means that maybe what a male does, say, during competition for resources could be related to how that same male behaves um, as a parent. And when these behaviors are consistent, then that might suggest that, well, then maybe this really bold and aggressive kind of uh, red-winged black bird might have trouble switching or sort of turning off this general tendency to be bold and aggressive when the situation changes. So he might be do great during competition for resources, but if he's too aggressive all the time, that might not be so great during the parenting context. Evolutionary biologists, when I tell them that what I study is correlated behavioral traits, they say, yeah, you know, we've known about this forever. We've known that genetic correlations between traits can have really important evolutionary consequences, and rarely do traits just operate independently of one another. And if we think of personality as being sort of a, a suite or an assemblage of different behavioral traits that happen to be correlated with each other, there's actually a really strong tradition within evolutionary biology of trying to study this. However, um, while there's this existing sort of framework for thinking about the evolution of correlated traits, the reality is, is that seldom have we actually tried to measure, say, or estimate the G matrix or the matrix of genetic correlations um, between behavioral traits. And most of these um, sorts of approaches have been concerned with kind of static tra traits that don't change. Um, very much within an organism's lifetime. And obviously when we're talking about something like behavior, this is something that can be really plastic.